Welcome to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters, the old heads, talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain your We got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please uh, send in a question. Come and get some answers. Learn a couple lessons from the masters with the special guests. We got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax. Cause we're gonna hit you with them stole cold facts. And allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the masters of the Nerdiverse. Welcome to Masters of the Nerdiverse podcast, where we always have such sights to show you. This Cadillac ac, 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 ac of a podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and Spotify. I'm, of course, your host, Mike G. And with me, as always, is the also yeah. host, the anti monitor to my monitor. I think I've said that before. Winter Trash Monk the Fizzard. <laughs> The dude who's got a broken back, but at least he can polish the fenders. You're listening to Masters of the Nerdiverse, Trash Monk the Third. That's Trash Monk, I, I, I. That's Trash Monk. And I'm coming at you. It's been about two weeks. Yeah, we had a little break. We had to take a little break, you know? Yeah. Which is okay. A little break. A little break. You know what I mean? Yeah. A little little break. But we're back. We're here. We're dear. And get used to deer, it. We love deers. Get used to it. Get used to it. You know, that's how yeah. we roll. So why did you tell Google to? Um... <laughs> no, right. I'm not. I, I can't. Yeah, you're you're can't gonna follow that thought day. through, my man. <laughs> nope. No. <laughs> it was a weird. <laughs> it was going down a weird tunnel. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, just turn it around. Just Make a U-turn. turn the car around. I'm going back home. No McDonald's for yeah. you, though. Yeah. You done, you done pissed off your pappy. Now he turned the car around. Now you're going to go home and do the dishes. That's how that go. You didn't make him happy, right. but you can't get a happy meal, dog. Get ham, spam, ma'am, bam, tomatoes, potatoes. <laughs> that was hype, though, when they did all the remixes. <laughs> yeah. Potatoes, tomatoes. <laughs> tomatoes, ham, spam, wham, bam, bam and <laughs> lamb. <laughs> That that's a that's an actual meme, yeah, right? No, that, I'm not making. No, there's some like okay. senator or something where she was talking about what she was cooking for Thanksgiving, and she was like freestyling on the mic, and everybody was like, "Yo!" Oh. She was like, "Ham, spam, potatoes, tomatoes, <laughs> greens, beans." <Yes. laughs> like what? And then everybody put beats behind it and stuff. You know, the, oh, okay. the internet. You know how they do. Then they should have cut to the Toronto mayor back in the day, going, "I have enough to eat at home." And then they should have went to what's uh, what's his you face? Went, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know that just destroyed his political career. Yeah, can you imagine making yeah. one noise and it destroys your entire career? Right? Can, can you, so we live in a day like no one thought that that was like a sign of maybe we should dial back on the social media. Nope. <laughs> if this is what's causing yeah. nope. full okay. throttle, <laughs> that was the birth of memes, Doug. You know, that was the birth. Yeah. That was the precursor, man. Howard Stern created memes. You heard it here first. Because he, Howard Stern <laughs> single handedly ended well, that guy's hey career. Now. <laughs> hey, now, here's Gary Delamonte coming in. <laughs> That's rough. Like, Howard Stern did that sound like every day for like two yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> it's just wrecked that guy. And now, yeah, he's like, all right, now we're getting the homeless woman to, to play human darts. Whoa. Whoa. And now he's like, so you mean to tell me in in your book in your book <laughs> yeah how how the mighty yeah. have how you've changed. mighty have changed yeah. uh, you know we, yeah. we could be considered shock you, jocks yeah. Doug you know we Look, could change the formatting yeah. real quick on this channel it's trash in the mic Mike, Mike, Mike in the more. morning yeah. <laughs> he's gonna throw up in your face across the human race. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my! Adios mio! You're so honey! <laughs> How was your week, man? How was your couple of weeks, actually? <laughs> it, <laughs> it was good. I resisted buying a video game. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, yeah. I want to play this game called Disc Jammers. Yeah, that's that's um, the game rules. Yeah, 
Okay, I'll buy yeah, it. Yeah, just buy it. I will buy it with you and play <laughs> so you that's online. That's the end of my week. Was... Yeah. How <laughs> was your week? This damage rules. Spend the money. It's like 20 bucks. Do it. Uh, right. So I did a good thing this week and I did a bad thing. I'm going to let you choose which one I talk about first. I want to hear the good thing. The good thing. The good thing is I got to spend time with my family and go see Godzilla King of the Monsters, actually. And despite its domestic sales, the movie was actually very, very good and fun. And a big sloppy wet kiss to all Godzilla fans from the person who saw it back in 1950, whatever, to the person who just saw the most recent one with Bryan Cranston. It's an awesome movie. Had so much fun. Enjoyed it uh, from head to toe. The humans were garbage. but That's part of the course for Godzilla movies. But all the Godzilla and Rodan and Mothra. Mothra! Yeah. That's, that's the joint. I want someone to remix that. I'm, I may make the end of the podcast music some weird Mothra theme song remix trap music if I can find it online. Yeah. But yeah, I love the movie. It was super good. Super good. And you have any thoughts on Godzilla? Are you a fan? Do you care? I love Godzilla. I remember one of the one of my jokes at the end of the last Godzilla was like, Godzilla's been lifting weights, bro. <laughs> and that made so one of my someone in my group like uh spew soda out their nose or something like nice, that. Nice, nice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Godzilla King of Adam, no spoilers, but there's one thing I have to talk about because my childhood would kill me. Is that one Unapologetically, one of my favorite Godzilla movies is Son of Godzilla with Godzuki. He will blow the little yeah. uh, atomic breath smoke rings. And one of my favorite spiders of my dad's was Spiga. And it was this spider that would spit webbing at Godzilla. And Spiga was on the island fighting Godzilla and Godzuki. And lo and behold, there's a call out to Spiga in the new movie. And I was I went to go see the movie with my mom. And my and my grandmother and my aunt, that's usually how we roll, you know, with the whole family. And my mom was like, Mike, is that Spiga? And I was like, shut up, it's not Spiga. And it ended up being Spiga, dude. We, me and my mom were marking out in the theater. It was so cool. I had a, such a good experience with her. And my mom is like a bigger Godzilla fan than I am. She loves Godzilla. And she watched the, the most recent one in preparation. And she told me, I was like, oh, mom, that's cool. And she totally was rocking out. We were both mosh pitting in our chairs, just freaking out. It was pretty cool. It was a very good, very fun experience. So uh, just for that alone, I love, love, love this movie. So I have nothing but good things to say about it. I want to buy it when it comes out. And I can't wait for Kong versus Godzilla, which I think is next year. So very good. Very happy about that. And now the bad news. So I did the bad thing, Winner. The bad. You did a bad, bad thing. Did Baby a did a bad, 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 bad thing. thing. Feel like crying. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Feel like crying. That's exactly what happened. That's for all your Chris Isaac fans out there. Yep. Okay, sorry. Go for on. all 13 of y'all. 13,000. Man. So there was, all I'm going to say is three words Final Fantasy fourteen. So. <clears throat> I used to be very into this game, like very, 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 very into this game. MMO, of course. And I was watching a conference where they were kind of talking about the new expansion, uh, Shadowbringers. And I just, I was, I got, I kept getting sucked in deeper and deeper into the FF14 hole. And I kind of started playing again, like, like playing a lot, like trying to catch back up to be ready for the expansion. So I'm completely back in, like hardcore. Like, we're going to play as soon as uh, we stop recording. I already have a couple of friends. I'm trying to get the band back together so we can all start playing again. And gotta get the band back together. Gotta get the band back together. It's becoming a road trip movie, my life is. So, yeah. So, for those who are into FF14, I am going to be creating a Masters of the Nerdiverse free company. I've decided to do that. It's just going to be me and probably one or two other people uh for now but i am going to but make that open to our fan base i don't know what you know our our fellow masters and we're gonna just start that from the ground up just like this channel and see what happens uh so i'm figuring out how to do that now 
uh, going to make like a little logo, a FF style logo. I'm going to design that soon. And also shout outs to one Ozzy Austin, who actually plays the game too. And he actually helped Ozzie me get Austin. back into it. Ozzy Austin, baby. So thank shout outs to him because he helped me. He helped encourage me to get back into it. He's been running some dungeons with me to get me back up to speed. So very happy that he's kind of taking the time to play the game. And just so you know, it's cross platform. So if you want to play it on PC, you can play with PlayStation players and vice versa. So definitely leaving that door open. And more information will be coming down the pipe in regards to joining the uh, MOTN masters of the free company so i'll be working on that soon for those who are interested and if not interested or if you just want to uh play the game and just hang out with us and not be part of the free company that's fine too we always need brave new soldiers to do these free dungeons and instances free company too uh other than that that's my that's been my couple of weeks is playing that game and seeing that movie man you know yeah. I mean? Um oh I saw Detective Pikachu. <laughs> oh, talk about that. Yeah. What's, I, what's that? So um Detective Pikachu on my list, I would definitely like so I go stream it, buy it, or five dollar bin. Yep. I would go buy it myself Ooh. because nice. it, it fits certain categories of is it rewatchable? I would say by the graphics right. alone, yes, it's definitely rewatchable. Um, the storyline has some missing elements, but I give it a grace because it's not m- meant for me. It's more meant for children. And mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's there's a, a glaring issue. Well, two of them. Uh, the first one is like Pikachu hits the ground. The guy is on like the top of a skyscraper and then as soon as Pikachu hits the ground, the guy is already at the bottom of the building. I'm like, that's the kind of the uh, typical movie trope that <laughs> that happens, I think. Right. Um, and then the other one is pretty much, um, I I don't want to spoil it, so I, I, I can't say the second okay. one. I just need but to know one thing. It, yeah. Okay, finish your thought. I'll, yeah. I'll ask my stupid question. Um, it, so the second part would be connected to how uh, I can't. I think it's called Deus Ex Machina or whatever it's called. Yep. Uh, where mm-hmm. say like a, a storyline is going so crazy and so like there's no other way to stop it. So the author or writer puts in a godlike character to fix everything. And then they go, thank you, Captain America, or thank you, Captain Planet. <laughs> and they go, yeah. that sort of thing. It's, like, it's my favorite meme in the world is like where Tuxedo Mask shows up yeah. and he throws a rose at like Sailor Moon. And she and he's like, and with that, I make my exit. And she's like, but you didn't do anything. <laughs> and he just, he just right. uses his cape and disappears. He's a reverse duex machina. Right. My stupid question was, is there any hint or mention of team rocket no but i would say Mm. that they're the with the amount of like effort they put into this pokemon movie there there's definitely going to be more movies where team rocket is going to be introduced in the future i don't think they want to put all their eggs in one basket (laughs) makes sense it's like in a fantastic four movie you're not going to have dr doom in the first movie right like why would you do that you space it out uh, I love Team Rocket so much. They're like my favorite part of Pokemon yeah. lore. And it was fun. It was yeah. fun to go like at the end of the movie to like think about like what other movie they could add on, like what could be sequels. And I was thinking like uh, Squirtle Squad would be a good next yeah, one. Yeah, Squirtle Squad. Rules. Uh, that's been thrown around. Anyone. I heard someone say like, unfortunately, the next one's going to be Jigglypuff <laughs> or something yeah. like that. I'm, like, I'm okay with Jigglypuff. Yeah. If they do it well. Yeah. If they do it well. Yeah. I wouldn't mind even like them doing the major three like Pokemon gods, you know, like Eridos and Moltres and all those casts, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I liked it. Um, I was definitely, <laughs> it was filled with a lot of um, <laughs> uh, families that were like, there was a lot of children. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's primarily a children's movie that has some jokes for adults in it. That's cool. I'm su- I'm super yeah. cool with that. Like, 
you know. I'm happy that kids are still into Pokemon and stuff like that, which we'll be talking more Pokemon later. Mm-hmm. But I need to ask, did they have a section that said, who's that Pokemon? No, they did have a section where it's it's at the like third at the beginning of the third act of the movie where Pikachu, uh, Detective Pikachu is like away from his trainer or like partner and he's singing, I want to be <laughs> the very <laughs> best. It's the best but, yeah, song ever, well, He's dude. cried while singing it. And that, that got a good, uh, that got a good pop from the audience. Going. Dude, oh, I remember you singing the song. <laughs> I remember being a kid and watching like Fox, like like no, not Fox, uh, WB, WB for wow. kids, and hearing the Pokemon song for the first time and it actually moved me to tears as a child. I was so inspired. I was like, "You teach me, and I'll teach you Pokemon." <laughs> like, Let's go! I just ran outside, start grabbing animals, and putting them in boxes. I caught a. I just ran outside and caught a lizard. Brought it back in the house. <laughs> like, You're this now is my, this is my lizard here. dar. <laughs> You're now snake dar. It's like hissing at me and trying give to me bite out. me. <laughs> <laughs> I put a little like, gold chain give me around out. it. Give me out! I leave. I want to leave. <laughs> I'll bite you. I'll bite you and your whole family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's my Pokemon moment. I'm happy that you saw it. I want. That's one of those where it's like. Uh, I'll catch it when it's on Amazon. Unfortunately, you know. Yeah, uh, we were originally going to see Godzilla, but I got the dates Godzilla. of release uh, wrong. So I thought Godzilla was coming out a week before it was. So we saw Detective uh, Pikachu for my birthday. That's fine. I'm now twenty six, that... folks. Uh, He's a grown ass man. Yeah, man. he has a he has a Kobe W two and everything. Pikachu. Yeah, right. Like I'm, I'm trying to plan for my my day to day, my day job. We're gonna go as a bunch of adults and just ransack a Chuck E. Cheese because one of my coworkers was like, "I've never been to Chuck E. Cheese before." I'm like, "In life, you've never been to a Chuck E. Cheese?" He's like, "No." I was like, "Then that's a road trip." All right, guys, we're gonna gas up the car. We're going to Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, <laughs> we're just gonna take it over. That's the plan, dude. I cannot have this in my house. <laughs> you know, you got to go to Chuck E. Cheese at least once. And so you know what? Uh, I forgot that I did this, but it would. Be, it's like it's good material. Uh, a friend asked me to watch the Sabrina show on Netflix. Yeah, I saw, I've, I've watched that. Yeah, so they wanted my perspective on it. <laughs> it now I'm super curious to see what you thought of this. Yes. Mess. <laughs> so first, I I have uh, I could go all over the place on it. Um, <laughs> my, my first gut reaction is it's a, it's a fictional TV show. Let's all calm down folks. Now, some of the messages I, uh, as many of you know, I'm busy on Sundays and in that, in that being busy, I cannot go by some of the messages, but you know what? I, there's very little TV shows that are a hundred percent that I can go by. Actually, there's no, there's not, I can't say a single show that I could go like, I agree a hundred percent of what that message is. I just can't. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not going to make a special category for Sabrina. Now it is funny to note that. Okay. Um, with modern day it's, witches, um, do not, uh, uh do not, okay. uh, define yeah. themselves as Satan worshippers. They're actually more no. of a self mastery feminist ideology type group. And then if uh, you talk to Satanists, they're most Satanists are non theistic, meaning that they do not believe in an actual Satan creature or being. Yeah. I I could be wrong on the definition of that. So again, it, it's it's using source material that a lot of people take very dearly. I mean, they're they're using terms like Baphomet and all this other stuff. Yeah, and you yeah. know that's that's adding to the authenticity. But we need to be careful when we go f- from um, making the entertainment show to be as valuable as the original product, and that's yeah. how you get edutainment sort of stuff. Yep. For instance. Ancient aliens, <laughs> yep. or that ruined a whole like generation of people with incorrect information. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like or like supernatural, for instance, where they'll use like 
a, they'll do their research and to build this authenticity, but yeah. you need to be careful of then going. So this is a hundred percent accurate of like, well, mm. accurate of what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, accurate. Of, oh, Cause I have, I, um, okay. And yes. this, I thought, so, and I, yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. So, uh, in so in regards to filmography, I think that I had some, I had some strong opinions on their, uh, choice of making things blurry. I think they use that too many times in the show. Yep. Uh, and also, what well, what was the other thing? Um, you, you, <laughs> you don't, there, there's a way, like when you do a vampire movie, do you hear vampires talk about being vampires a lot? Or like Not I know they really. just do yeah they, it's it's kind of it's a weird balance that you have to make. This yeah. is kind of like hitting you on the nose, going, "Oh, praise the Dark Lord! It's such a gloomy day. It's fabulous." Like we get yeah. it, we get it, <laughs> we get it, but, folks. But they don't think you get it though, because they. Yeah. I, I'm gonna hold my com- my comments until you're done. But yeah, because yeah. they don't think you get it because this is the same guy that does Riverdale and the same guy who did Glee. All of them beat you over the head. And then somehow sprinkle fairy dust on you to make you think that you're smart. Yep. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm, calling, I'm throwing in the towel. No worries. Did you end up finishing the whole tr- the whole both seasons? Uh, I didn't even know they're the second season. <laughs> yep, I, I did. I'm four episodes. <laughs> I watched all of it, man. I've been four <laughs> episodes right now. Okay, so here's the thing, and you're absolutely right. The thing about Sabrina the Teenage Witch is, for one, it's a bit jarring if you even give, if you care anything about any form of, as you say, Sunday activity, right? It's a little jarring because they're so, the show is staunchly Satanistic, if that's a word. Right. It's staunchly ha- is set in its, there, there's a lot of hell Satans floating around. There's a lot of, uh, what in, what in the heaven? <laughs> Which I thought was stupid. Right. But the thing is, is that like you mentioned, true believers on either side don't really condone what this show is about. Like even the Church of Satan actually sued the show right. for the uses of Bahamut because they said they were using their this this uh, I don't even know what to call it this figure incorrectly. But the thing about this show is, is that. It's the same thing about what people think about Lovecraftian horror, mm-hmm. is that people like the idea of Cthulhu as told to you by popular culture, but if you really sat and read, like the you know the Mountains of Madness and uh, the works of H.P. Lovecraft, you'll know that he was a sexist, xenophobic, racist, bas- yeah. you know, shut in. Like, and this stuff is not really that good. But this show, and, he, and besides that, he was also a bad guy. <laughs> he was kind of a bad person. Yeah. He reminds me. Yeah. It was like I loved Edgar Allan Poe until I read about him. But anywho, yeah. um, this show pre- pre- uh, presents you uh, uh, Satanist beliefs as told to you by pop culture. You know what I mean? Right. It's what we. Th- it's what people think goes on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Versus what really goes on, right. and it's like you said. That's a slippery slope. Because when people start walking around thinking that this is actually how it goes, and they are confronted by people who actually are believing this, believing that, mm-hmm. then it becomes a problem. becomes a big problem. That's why a lot of that's why the show wasn't condoned by either side of it. Right. And you'll love like later in the seasons how they portray, um, let's just say people who like to go to, who have things to do on Sunday. Okay. Because they're a big part of the second season. Now here's something. Would you so the way that. They asked me if I would recommend it, and I told them I would. I would not recommend it a hundred percent because there are people that uh, that are like struggle. You know what I'm saying? That like they have some skeletons in their closet. No, no reason to bring up Sabrina skeletons in your closet. But I got, love a boo haunted house. Yeah, like this is something that is near and dear to them. And why would I go up and be like you need to watch Sabrina? It would be like you, like a borderline, like someone who is a alcoholic and that, or like struggles with alcohol, and then go like, you should really watch this documentary on Guinness. 
Yeah, watch, watch Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Right. Uh, struggling alcoholic. Yeah, you just got to be smart, folks. I think, like, I, you know, I watched the whole thing, and you would think I watched the whole thing because I enjoyed it, right? Yes. And I, on a, on a level, I did. I'm not going to lie. Uh, because I'm, a, I'm mature enough to know the line. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, if you're not mature enough to watch this in a box and, and see it as what it is, is pure entertainment. Yeah. Then you may be influenced by some of these things. I think they're glamorous, or think in the box. I'm the man in the box. <laughs> my shirt. Anyway, uh, would I recommend this? <laughs> I love that song. Um, would I recommend this to someone? If sure, it's fictional. It's it's a it's a show. It's but the thing is, yeah. is that it, it beats you so hard over the head with it. If you're not mature enough in your own beliefs, or mature enough right. in your own, yeah. you know, state of being, that this can be influential to kids. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it's like kids shouldn't be watching this. That's, this is not a kid I think show. we can all agree kids should not be. Yeah. But there are some parents like, like oh, I can't control them. I, just, I, I can't control them. But it's it's like. Even when I, I talked about this show a couple of months ago, like when I started watching it, yeah. And I'll tell you, this is not for children. It's it has set heavy sexual innuendo. There's heavy uh, religious and, and you know connotations. Um, it's dark. It's probably it's a shade darker than supernatural, right? I would say definitely. But it's also it's it's also very whimsical and very ch- it's almost childlike. It's like. It's. It reminds me of you know the you know the the gum that looks like chewing tobacco. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just not. Don't give all right like candied cigarettes. Yeah. The show is a giant candied cigarette. I like it. That's a good review. You know, so I feel you. So I'm, I was just curious to see what you thought of this show because it is it does beat you over the head with the upside yeah. down cross, doesn't it? Yeah, right. you know? it's it's like the. <laughs> We would we would we would like destroy any other show that goes like this is the major plot point of the show. Oh, and by the way, every episode will mention it every half hour or like every yeah. every three. Like this show is about secret agents. Every minute, you know, I'm a secret agent. Secret agents yeah. be praised. I'm a secret agent. <laughs> yeah, Sabrina, you're a human. But you're a witch, so you have to go to witch school. But don't forget to get about human school. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to go to human school. It's lame. No, your friends are there. But this other school is cool, but they're malicious. Yeah. That's every episode. Every single episode broaches that. In detail. Every single time. Yeah. Oh, that show is weird. But there is a hilarious Satan where he just has a goat head. Yeah. And he has these big ass boots. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's so burnt out. I love it. Yeah. It's, so, it's so campy. Oh man! Right. Oh, Speaking so I which, do want to mention. And, well, there was one part that made me turn my head. That made me go like, okay. "This probably contradicts what you are wanting this show to be," or like, okay. and, and it's very interesting that I would mention this in Pride Month, or I'm the, even the person mentioning it. That's very surprising. But there is an epi- You know the part where they lure the uh, football players into the cave, and like, yeah, yeah, yeah and then they lot. like. Yeah, it's like they're pretending to make out with them, but it turns out they make out with each other, and then they take photos. So let's think about that in the perspective of the people who are like, what, who are making this? Like, are they trying to say, like, we're going to blackmail you for kissing another dude? I'm like, well, wouldn't the, I'm assuming the creators of the show, (laughs) you you see where I'm going? It's a it's a slippery slope the conversation yeah. we're having right now. But what I will say is that I think they kind of knew they knew of course they knew what they were doing a hundred percent yeah yeah. But I think they were coming at it from the point of view where oh these meathead jocks are probably you know this kind of way in regards to where that threat would be threatening in this current age. Yeah. Now nowadays nowadays that's not a threat because. You know, it's fine. Everyone, everyone loves it. You know, every, yeah. if you like it, I love it. Right. But I even think there's a later plot point where one of those guys was like, it was like, okay, <laughs> you know, but I don't remember because I didn't retain a lot of that show, but there are some parts of the show where it's, 
it's heavy handed in all the wrong places. Like there is mm-hmm. a there is a character in the show that has is gender fluid, and she's and she's going through her kind of blossoming into who she who she really is, and who and that's and she happens to be a he, and that's a big yeah. arc for this character. But they but they beat it so heavy right. over your head that it stops X Men already like, did it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Uh, X Men did it, <laughs> but yeah, it's just the show has things it wants to say, but it just, but it's saying it, it, it thinks it's saying it to a five year old when it should right. be saying it to a fifty year old. If that makes sense, yeah, 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 kind of nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nevertheless, I watched all of it and probably will watch season three because it's just a big train wreck that I like. But anywho, yeah, it's just a little heavy. I like hand. Boston Legal, to, folks. <laughs> it just needs to relax a little, you know. Yeah. Uh, speaking of characters who have no chill, you want to do this poll of the week? Let's go to the polls. What? That's what's up. It's funny you use that because this this poll we did was quite patriotic. Yes, because this poll was done for Memorial Day, which was last week, but. Uh, nevertheless, shout out to the memorials, poll. folks. Shout out to those memorials. Uh, because this poll I did this week didn't really do that well, so <laughs> we're gonna go with the poll that did better. <laughs> the poll I wanted to do this week didn't do that well, so it's fine. Uh, so this poll I did was which who is your favorite fictional soldier? And we got to get moving because we have a ton of uh news this That's week. True. So the options were Captain America, Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. Major um, Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell and John Rambo from First Blood because I refuse to call yes, the movies. Or Rambo. Last Blood that's coming out. Oh, shut up about Last Blood. It's not even on the docket. Stupid. It looks Rambo was good. Okay. Rambo won. How many people did Rambo kill in Rambo in the first Rambo? Enough. In, uh, first <laughs> he killed like nobody because he wasn't about killing. He's going to take he's about- his horse to the old town road one last time. Why the sh- why the hell was that song in the trailer? I'm so he's tired. He's gonna ride till he can't ride no mo. <laughs> oh, I hate that song so much. <laughs> I hear it every day of my life, literally every day. Well, awesome. you might be surprised that the song hates you as well. It has a sentient mind, and it's out there for revenge. It's out for blood against all those who wear cowboy boots at least once. No, so just you. Was- <laughs> just me. Fair enough. Weird things have vendettas with me. I had a beef with like a hawk all like the summer of 2015. This one yeah. hawk was following me. Well, we don't talk about that anymore. Take my money! Just leave me alone. It just flew over my, my my head and just flapped his wings real fast yeah. and it, it discombobulated me. I was I was I was legit shook. I was yeah. dead ass shook, guys. So let me just to say Captain America won with a Astonishing, like sixty-five percent of the votes, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rambo got second. A lot of Rambo love out there from people who are like, like our age demographic, yeah. from like nineteen to like forty-five. It's a lot time of Rambo to get love. those POWs. <laughs> if you want to fight a war, you gotta you gotta become yeah. a war. Have you Remember? seen my turtles? Okay. Ram- Rambo loves tur- turtles. Uh, Solid Snake got third place, and there was no love for the major, Doug, Major Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. Maybe because it's a lesser known character. I don't know. Yeah. But now, hey. why did you not pick Snake Plissken, folks? Or, like, why wasn't that an option? Because I see him more as an outlaw than a soldier. I don't know why. Oh. I was going full on background lore where I believe he was a soldier. I think he was a soldier at some point. Yeah, but I'm not very familiar with. I didn't. I didn't. I, I love Escape from L.A. But Escape I, I from L.A. Seen, or Escape from New York. I want to say you got to save yourself. What are you talking about? No, I love Escape from L.A. because it's stupid and it has Bruce Campbell as some weird kind of like plastic surgeon. Okay, but I've only seen Escape from New York like once or twice. That wasn't a heavy rotation movie in my household. So okay. So, but but Escape from L.A. was like on Showtime like every day for like three years. So I watched the hell out of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I thought you were dead. I was. 
snake, snake plus skin. Remember when, uh, speaking of um, questions, remember when uh, Fox, not Foxy Brown, Pam Greer played Isaac Hayes? <laughs> she was the Isaac Hayes character. She played so Isaac cute. Hayes? Yeah, you know Isaac Hayes in the first movie? Car Jack Malone is that same character, but in L.A. He got a sex change. Wow. That's the that's the storyline. I didn't realize that. I thought yeah, super crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I thought he died in the first one. Nah, he got better because his name was like Car Jack Malone or something like that. <laughs> we gotta jack his heart with a car. <laughs> car Jack Malone, I'm gonna jack you up with my car, mm-hmm. baby. Ain't got enough of your love, Bar- that's Barry White. Damn it. <laughs> so because we're a little bit of a time crunch and there's a ton of news. You want to do some uh, news ho- news lightning round? I thought you'd never ask. Beautiful. So let's imagine. dance. Let's, let's dance. dance. Lightning let's... round. Lightning chance tonight. <laughs> wow! I was going to do the news intro, but that works too because it is a lightning round. Yeah, this lightning. is without coffee, folks. Let me just tell you. I haven't had coffee in three years, so. How this works is that I'm going to give Winter a topic. He's going to yet he's going to yay or nay. If he yays, we'll talk about it for like 30 seconds. But if he nays, we have to immediately move on. And I get one veto if I choose to use it. So that's that. And we're going to start begin. going into this. Let's <laughs> the game is on. Let's begin. You're all the man now, dog. Uh. Let's start. Uh, Gaming disorder is officially recognized as a disease by the World Health Organization. Uh, Yay or nay? Nay. (laughs) Moving on. (laughs) Cuphead will be playable in the new Tesla Model 3, Model S, and Model X cars. Day later, teenager dies while playing Cuphead, but it's the final level. <laughs> but but actually beat the the Street Fighter analogy. How smart is this? Not smart at all, folks. You know but, you know how hard Cuphead is. Yeah. Like the game is very difficult. It's not Pokemon Go or something. Yeah, I mean if it's Cuphead a self driving difficult. car, I understand. But no, folks, come on. Why even have that? Why even have any video games in a car? In the drivers in 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 the front seat. That's so maybe maybe it's not in the front seat. It probably will be. Teslas are dumb cars anyway. Anywho, moving on. Pokemon Go Plus and Pokemon Sleep has been announced. Yay or nay? What is Pokemon Sleep? I want to talk about it just to rant and rave about why do we need this? Because Pokemon Go made a billion dollars or something stupid. Pokemon Sleep. Like, do are we really folks unable to sleep unless we gamify it? They want you to sleep so they can read your snores, and depending on your snores, you will get Pokemon, dude. You want to get Pokemon in your sleep? Oh my gosh, no! It says it makes a little <laughs> Pikachu noise, subliminal messagery while you sleep, dog. Aren't you ready to catch Pokemon beat the, beat in your dream? Smoke. <laughs> Consume product. <laughs> No, we don't need we need less gamification if you're asking me. Like people need to just like suck it up, but I, I sound I just more like po- my I'm sounding more like an old man every day. But. So you wouldn't buy Pokemon shit where it's just like you have, you have to be in the bathroom? No. I wouldn't buy Pokemon Pornhub. I wouldn't buy Pokemon <laughs> bathroom. You can buy that now though. <laughs> I wouldn't buy Pokemon <laughs> anything. I almost got Pokemon Go, but I'm like, no. If I'm I gonna walk, my phone gonna walk I, I don't need some game to to incentivize me to go walk. Uh, I got Pokemon on my phone, Doug, and I had to tell my boss to move because he was blocking a uh, Coferi, Doug. Oh I said, "Boss, move out the way. Like, move your arm. Get out the way, blocking oh, Coferi." <laughs> You bucking my fairy, Doug. He was like, "Oh, my bad." I he was like, "I get it. I'm hip with the kids." Yeah. So, Mortal Kombat 11 has announced their new DLC pack, uh, featuring Shang Tsung, Shang Tsung, and more. Yay or nay? 
Uh, I got nothing to add to this, but I bet you're going to use your veto on this. Just, I'm just waiting to pull the trigger, so you let me know. I'm going to go nay. Then I use my veto to talk about this. I use my veto card. <laughs> I use my, and I end my turn. Dude, they put so much love into this game, dude. So the original char- the original actor from the Mortal Kombat movie, Mortal Kombat, um, is actually came back to do the voiceover work in the mocap oh, cool. for Sang Sung, which is the first DLC character in Mortal Kombat 11. He does all the lines like, and, and now for a taste of things to come, and your soul is mine. And he plays so good. And the character uses the original Mortal Kombat 2 ninjas, like Rain and Smoke and Ermac and, and Reptile, yeah. in his moveset. It is so dank, dude. And uh, also they have announced the other characters in this combat pack, which are going to be Sindel from like Mortal Kombat 3, uh, Nightwolf from Mortal Kombat 2, and uh, Spawn from Soul Calibur 2. <laughs> Spawn from Spawn. So I'm super excited for this, and I can't wait to see what Sang Shung's talking about. More curious to see what, see what Spawn is like. Because Spawn hasn't been in a fighting game in almost 20 years. So I'm really curious to see how they do my boy Al Simmons. Yeah. So just give him guns, folks. Come on. Give him all the guns. Death Stranding. Release date revealed and new trailer. Yay mm-hmm. or nay. I think we can call ourselves a gaming podcast if we don't talk about this. I say yay. Yay. So what are you gonna name your bridge baby? Uh Golden Gate. <laughs> I'm gonna name mine Roosevelt. <laughs> yeah, I'm still again, it it looks great, but we still barely know any of the gameplay. Yep. Uh this I've been saying since the beginning that this is uh this is what happens. This is like the the artist is now have been has given free range of a company, and this is what he's going to be making. Let's just hope that it is playable. Yeah, this is someone's untamed id spilled out on a canvas. You know what I'm saying? So, I just I'm like I just want to see a life bar. You know what I'm saying? I want to see an enemy gauge. They showed a gun. They showed you yeah. fire the gun. I don't, maybe they're but, not going to have a life bar. Maybe it's going to be like everything grays out if you're going to die. Yeah, or you'll get the strawberry jam like in Gears of War or something like that. Uh, I just want to, I just want to see someone playing this game for like five minutes, like just someone holding a controller. Ain't gonna and, do it. Ain't it. Gonna do it. Ain't gonna do it. E three is like down the street, man. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, but uh, it would have to be a a Sony. Well, Sony's not at E three, right? Well, yeah, true. But there's going to be more state of plays and things like that. So yeah, and plus, I don't. Is Death Stranding a PS4 exclusive? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't think so. It's very Sony seems to be pushing it very heavily, but I don't remember. I'm going to nay on this one, uh, this next bit of video game news because You're I kind of already talked about it. Which is just Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. The benchmark uh, is now available. Gameplay changes. Summoners all the way. Let's go. Well, in a weird turn of events, I'm going to use my veto on Final Fantasy. No, I'm not, guys. Wow. <laughs> and now you reveal your trap card and send me to the Shadow Realm. Movies. <laughs> I guess saying this head this headline kind of explains it. So we can just say... Sonic the Hitchhawk live action movie delayed until February 14th, 2020. Got pushed back a year. Are you happy now, Internet? <sighs> no. They're never happy, Doug. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of the Internet. Uh, so I guess they're r- rumoring that they're going to be making a Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic movie. <laughs> yay or nay? Uh, Yay. I'd actually like that. Get some more Star Wars yeah. movies. That's not about the Skywalkers, maybe. Uh, yeah, same here. Love. I've talked about the series much, much a time on this podcast. I'm just afraid that they try to 
it's such a good story to where you can get a major actor and have him be in, let's say, a, a Knights of the Old Republic trilogy and have the ending of Knights of the Old Republic still stand up and it'd be a shock to some people who don't know about the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that would be a cool, like, the story writes itself as long as they don't butcher it too much. You know what I mean? Just get you a big face actor to be uh, the titular character, your character. Viggo Mortensen, and, come on. Viggo Mortensen, Mads Mikkelsen, uh, Charlie Hunnam. And uh, by the end of the trilogy, everyone should be um, leave the theater grinning, I think. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Did you see this uh, Terminator Dark Fate trailer, yay or nay? Uh, I'm always going to be yay for a Terminator movie, even though I know it's not good for my health. I'm the hunter. I am hunting. We got to get this Terminator. Terminator. It's just like the other one. Remember when the Terminator was scary and it had like suspense and and intrigue and that was only in the first one. That was only in the first one, and then it became an action film. This is why I hate James Cameron. (laughs) James Cameron is the Michael Bay of the eighties. Wait, yes, he was. Michael Bay was in the eighties, right? He ruins everything, dog. He Anywho. ruins everything. He ruins. I'm John Malkovic. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> My soda doesn't have ice. <laughs> Get Jerry Bruckheimer on the phone. On phone idiot. <laughs> I need to speak to Jerry. Um Animated spinoff of Jurassic World, Camp Cretaceous is headed to Netflix. I'm going to nay this one. I don't care. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I do want to talk about this one. Apparently, Quentin Tarantino is lining up a new Zorro Django Unchained film. What the hell is that going to be? I'd watch it. I'll watch it. I don't know why Gerard Carmichael's in it or like teaming up. All I care is that if they get Antonio Banderas to play like Zorro, and get Jamie Foxx to play uh, Django, I would be super down for that. Antonio Banderas can play like an old season Zorro yeah. and have him team up with like Jamie Foxx's like Django and go on adventures and stuff. That would be dope, dude. Have yeah, Catherine like... Vita Jones make an appearance. Why not? She ain't doing nothing. No. She's just chilling at the house. With, you know with Billy Bob. Or with Billy. I thought she was with Michael Douglas. Or am I old? Or has that been gone? It's hard to keep up with Hollywood relationships. They're so fickle. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Now you're an old man. (laughs) Now I'm an old man. Fickle. I use big words. That's how you know I'm old. Uh, What are you looking forward to? I am looking forward to a weekend of sleep, maybe playing disc jammers if I buy it. Buy it. And, you know, watching... Some uh, YouTube. Uh, some of my favorite channels are leaving Rooster Teeth or being canceled. So, that sucks. Yeah. yeah. Cow Chop is about to be gone. Sugar Pine 7, gone. Gone. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to rewatching all of Marble Hornets, <laughs> which is kind of like where Slender Man got his original idea from. It's like a 97 part. YouTube video extravaganza. I feel like watching them all again because I have nothing else going on in my life. Uh, I'm also looking forward to playing more FFs 14. I'm going to be sending out more information about that through the Twitter, which is at M Nerdiverse. I'm actually looking forward to doing another MLTN after dark uh, in between like the big weeks brother. After dark? Yeah. It's like, it's like a midnight. It's like a midnight Milky way. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's dark, but it's full of antioxidants. Doug. So it's good for you. It's good for you. So I, I actually, in between our recording sessions, I got a spur of um, a spur of the moment idea to do a quick recording on a subject of my choosing that may some may deem to be risque. So MLTN After Dark was born, where I got to talk about disproportionate. Uh, characters in comic books and how to fix that and my ideas on it. So and that got a pretty proportionate characters. Yeah, like uh, think about bigger heads. 
yeah, let's say bigger heads. That's a good way. To put it. <laughs> okay. Amongst other things, uh, so you're wanting about that. you're wanting more smaller heads to be <laughs> in Kong. I would like. I just want proportionate heads based upon the actions, characteristics, and power sets of those characters. I got it. Got it. I don't like it. It's not. I'm not a fan of it. So, but I got a good response. So I'm going to be doing more MLT and After Darks. I already have my next topic underway, which I'm probably going to record sometime this week when I feel like it. So MLT and After Darks, as well as a new MLT and reviews of Avengers Endgame, which is like a two hour review, which is a big honka honka, is actually going to be available early on our newly revised Patreon. So I ne- we've never really had a good jump on Patreon because I never really truly understood it. But I've been researching it a lot more and kind of speaking with our MLTN master brains over here to kind of game plan a new way to give you guys exclusive content and for you to help support the channel. So I'm going to be launching our new Patreon by the end of the week, probably Friday. Uh, I'll be launching that. So I'll be the more information will be on MLTN uh, at M Nerdiverse. Absolutely. Right on. Because we, we're all about the money here. We're all Give about the money. Money, 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 money no money, trouble. Because daddy needs his steakums and his scrimps. <laughs> okay. That's an ugly laugh. Any last thoughts before we close this bad boy out? Um, yeah. Check out my social media at Trashmonk the Third. Trashmonk I am only adding stuff. Uh, first mm-hmm. rehearsal for audio drama being produced that I wrote was today. Uh, I was unable to attend it, but it should be being it should be produced in the coming month or so. So be on the lookout yeah. for that, Jack. And I play Boo Boo the Fool. It's awesome. <laughs> and uh, you know, check out check me out on Bumble, and you know, that's about it. Also, check out the Wise Cast. He does a, another podcast with his homeboy. They talk about oh, cool yeah, stuff. Check out, yeah, check out the Wise Cast at wisecast.com where we talk about youth culture and we're changing the format to where young people will slip in like note cards with questions into this uh, bowl and we'll pick a random question and then we'll answer it. Yeah, the Wise Cast is getting it, Doug. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, we're going to be actually posting our and actually check out our twitch channel ozzy austin every other sunday where we do dungeons and dragons we actually play with ozzy austin and king of myths and we have a pretty good time yeah so i need to promote that a lot more often we're uh, the so league you, of miss uh, uh misaligned gentlemen <laughs> we're we're um the island of misfit boys yeah <laughs> Boys, one of the toys, one of the boys. That's a song, right? Okay, that is a song. So check us out there. We have a ton of fun playing D and D. This is my first time. It's my first campaign, and they're kind of guiding my hips through it. So I'm having a, a blast learning how to play, and just getting excited for the whole new game. Yes, while so, guiding his hips, we're playing. Only you can make us as well. I was thinking more of Happy Gilmore, like, it's all in the hips. Oh. It's all Sixteen the candles. Wow. Okay, Winter, leave some space for Jesus, okay? Th- f- you know, five feet on the floor, please. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My darling, my wonderful oh, touch. You know, you can also <laughs> create your own Unchained Melody of podcast episodes on our website which is masters of the nerdiversecast.com where we archive all of these bad boys you can listen from this episode which is episode 89 all the way back to the first episode where i don't know what i'm doing still don't know what i'm doing and can and we that's where you can find recommend them our- um, can we recommend <laughs> i'm sorry God damn it. Can, I, can I recommend leaving a five star rating review review and don't lose that loving feeling I've, of course, been your host, Mike G. <laughs> and I've been your host, Winter. <laughs> and we will always ask you to take that one step beyond. <laughs>